Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report Mailbag Edition. Today's show was filmed during Thursday's live show, every Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern. So if you've got a question you want to ask, tune in next Thursday, and we'll answer it for you live during the show. The first question coming in via Super Chat from Chef Ruben. Bring the pain. By the way, we love the new Browns polo, PD. You look so official now. What are the chances we bring pain to Cleveland? Deron Payne is going to be the number one defensive tackle free agent. I think just the skill set, the skill set and the age. He's 25 and he's got 11 and a half sacks this year. You can't ask for much more. What are the chances? It's tough to answer because I don't know if Andrew Barry has sort of learned his lesson. We have learned in a few drafts and free agency periods, he doesn't value that position group very high. He kind of goes bottom of the barrel and makes it the bottom of his priority list. That burned him this year. Will he learn his lesson? I, I don't think so. I don't think, he, I don't think he's going to go out and swing for the number one guy. Maybe he puts better forth of an effort than just Taven Bryan in free agency, but I don't think it's going to jump from Taven Bryan, little one-year contract, to five-year, $70 million deal for T- Deron Payne. So I don't think he's willing to back the truck up for a position group that he just doesn't see as one of the biggest spots of uh, priority list in his idea, in his mind. Uh, Chef Ruben, thank you very much for the super chat. Next question coming in from Mac Predilis. How optimistic are you that Chubb gets rushing title after a 150-plus yard game and Josh Jacobs gets less than 20 yards? Not optimistic at all. Nick Chubb is currently second right now in the NFL rushing leaderboard behind Josh Jacobs. So Mac asking if he can overtake him essentially. That's asking for a that's a big ask right there. Especially against a Steelers defense that always plays tough, right? So for that reason, I don't think so. The bigger ask here isn't asking for Nick Chubb to go over 150. It's asking for Josh Jacobs to get bottled up by the Chiefs for 20 or less yards. And I don't even think the math right there of 130 yard difference is going to be enough for him. Next question coming in from McLovin. Great movie. Is a D-hop trade an actual possibility? So, it does feel like DeAndre Hopkins is probably done in Arizona. The team's looking for a hard reset. And you know it's not a part of a hard reset? A 31, 32-year-old, 32-year-old wide receiver who's relatively expensive. So, is he an actual trade possibility for the NFL? Yes, I think, I think he's going to get traded. I think you might see him get traded on draft day, kind of like A.J. Brown last year. Is he going to Cleveland? The Browns do need a speedy slot wide receiver. The issue is that's not really Hopkins, right? They've got Hopkins esque players or caliber, you know, similar skill set in Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples Jones. So I don't really know how much you're accomplishing by bringing in Hopkins, other than he's a stud wide receiver who, by the way, overlapped with Deshaun Watson for quite some time in Houston. I don't see Andrew Barry parting ways with his second-round draft pick, if it takes that, especially without a first-round pick to get D-Hop. But it's a fun idea, no doubt about it. But what do you think? Should the Browns trade for D-Hop? Trade or pass? Let me know in the comments section below what you're thinking about the idea of trading for DeAndre Hopkins. If it's a second-rounder, as fun as that might sound, you don't have a pick in the first or the second, and you're waiting for your comp pick in the third I think I might have to pass, actually, and I might hate myself for saying that next season, but that's a lot of, you know, a few uh, draft assets you have then going into 2023. Frank Page, speaking of Hopkins, get Hopkins and fire Joe Woods. So I won't completely repeat myself for what I just said about Hopkins. As for Joe Woods, yeah, his Thursday press conference sounded like a dead man walking. It sounded like a guy who was speaking to the Cleveland media for the last time. Hopkins, excuse me, Woods' defense has played really well the last couple of weeks, but honestly, the first 10 plus weeks of the season, or whatever, it was too bad to forgive. Especially when you think about, yeah, the defense has improved the last two weeks. They're averaging 14 points per game in the last six weeks against quarterbacks like Tyler Huntley and Andy Dalton and Carson Wentz and Kyle Allen. You get the gist here. Jaron Ferguson. How do you feel about letting go of John Johnson, Hunt, Greedy, etc., cut bait heavy, sign Payne or Ngakwe, sign Clowney back cheap, and draft a safety wide receiver and linebacker? All right, Jared, let's kind of break this down bit by bit here. 
you release John Johnson after June 1st, and you're going to get a decent amount of cap savings. Before June 1st, it's not a whole lot. But if you release him after June 1st, you don't have that money to spend in March. Um, you're... Yeah, you're not bringing back Kareem Hunt. You're not bringing back Greedy Williams. They're both free agents. So there's no cap savings to be had there by letting them go. Uh, signed Deron Payne. Hey, I, I'm not opposed to signing Deron Payne. I just don't think Andrew Barry is going to do it. Would I like him to do it? Yes. I would love for Andrew Barry to get Miles Gare a defensive tackle that has 11 and a half sacks this year. So I'm all for Deron Payne. Do I think it happens? Not really. Ngakwe is an interesting name. Another name I kind of like is uh, what DeForest Buckner from the Colts. I think the Colts are going to do a hard reset this year. And I know Buckner's on the last year of his deal with no dead cap hit. So they might as well move on from him or trade him or something. And that would be a fantastic partner in crime for Miles Garrett. Clowney wants to come back because it's July and no one else is called because he's had a bad year this year. Sure, give him a vet minimum. And he could be a part of the rotation with Alex Wright at that defensive end spot. Draft to safety, I don't know, late probably. But I love Grant Delpit, and I kind of like DeAnthony Bell. Wide receiver, yeah, I think in round two, you probably go best player available. I'm going to hope that that best player happens to be a defensive tackle if you don't get Deron Payne. But it very well could be a slot wide receiver. And then linebacker, there's only three linebackers on the roster next year. J.O.K., Jacob Phillips, and Tony Fields. So they definitely need to add more guys at that room. Now, if you are a real Browns fan, and I mean a real Browns fan, like you're watching this team even after they're eliminated from the postseason, you're keeping up with this team even in the offseason, you're looking for 365-day coverage all year long, hit that big red button and subscribe for the best Cleveland Browns YouTube content. And I also really want to quickly share with you guys our sportsbook partner today, BetUS. Listen, playoffs are right around the corner. I'm telling you guys right now, this is the time to get your futures in. If you've got a good gut feeling about who's going to win the Super Bowl, don't wait till the playoffs start because the odds and the value is only going to get worse for you. Do it right now. Make all of your picks at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Browns125. I put a future down before Jimmy G got hurt on the 49ers. Looking pretty good right now. They're playing pretty well. So make your picks at BetUS. Billy Moss 7 there are rumors of an eighth seed in the AFC being added to the playoffs. We're back, baby. So, Billy Moss, two quick things, and for everyone watching this later on. This is Thursday during our live show. Depending on when you're watching this, the NFL may have dated this question, and they have solved what is an enigma of the playoffs right now. Uh, no, unfortunately, I, I ran the math. If the Browns win, and even the Dolphins and the Patriots lose, they don't have the tiebreaker over them. So, it, it doesn't matter. Levi Mayfield, Will Fuller. The fact that Will Fuller didn't get any kind of tryout this year, no practice, mm, makes you wonder how in season shape is he? Maybe he needed a year off to rehab a little bit more. Uh, Will Fuller would definitely feel the need at the Browns wide receiver spot of like a speed demon in the slot right now. So I'm not opposed because, let's be honest, Anthony Schwartz not getting the job done. So... And David Bell is not that type of player, right? You're not that guy. He is a possession zone receiver who's going to sit down and get you the first down and some hard-earned yards. So Will Fuller, a rookie, uh, a draft, or some other free agent, yeah, sign me up. Mac Predilis next up. AB always has one epic move up his sleeve each year. I trust we'll get something good this year that we need. This is true. Like, no one really saw the Deshaun Watson trade happening a year ago right now. You know what I mean? Even until it happened, no one really saw it happening until about two weeks beforehand. So what could that big move be for AB? I'm trying to think of a blockbuster trade. Um, I might have to revisit this because I had someone in mind earlier, but maybe it is like a Duran Payne, a DeForest Buckner, right? Some big name interior defensive lineman. Uh, T. Higgins? No, here, here's, here, here's something. It's not T. Producer Patrick's. Whispering nonsense in my ear. Jesse Bates. Another Bengals player. You actually got me down that path. Maybe Jesse Bates comes over from Cincy because, let's be honest, that poverty franchise is only going to pay Joe Burrow and no one else. Ben the Brownie. I saw on Twitter that Nick Chubb may be traded. Tell me it won't happen. I did say this too on Twitter. There was some talk of if Andrew Barry got a phone call from the Buffalo Bills, right? And they're like, 
we're going to offer you a second-round pick for Nick Chubb, or maybe even a first-round pick. We just saw Christian McCaffrey go for a second, a third, and what, like a fourth, I think? I don't want to see it happen for one, one big reason, the emotional element. I love Nick Chubb. I just got a Nick Chubb jersey for Christmas. I do not want to see him get traded for that element. And then there's the football side of things. Of Nick Chubb is instrumental to this team. He is the fabric in the DNA of the Cleveland Browns since 2018. Him and Miles Garrett have been the two constants for the last five years or so. So for that reason, no. But at the same time, yeah, if a team calls and offers you a first-round pick for a running back, well, the Browns kind of killed that idea with Sheldon Richardson. You're probably never going to see that again. But if it were to happen, yeah, I think Andrew Barry is going to go, emotion aside, a first-round pick when we don't have one for a, you know, middle-of-the-career running back like Nick Chubb off of his rookie contract, I'm sure he'd think long and hard about it. He might very well do it. But no one's calling to offer a first-round pick for a running back no longer on their rookie deal. That's just not going to happen. I, I, I know it happened with McCaffrey, but they didn't get a first for McCaffrey. And I'm guessing McCaffrey is probably worth more in a GM's eyes than Nick Chubb. So uh, it, won't, it won't happen, to answer your question, Ben. But would you trade Nick Chubb for a second? I, I think if a first called, I guess I'd have to take it. It's the first-round pick. I'd be lying if I say I wouldn't be interested in that. But a second-round pick, that's more of a... Let me think about it for a second. I'll have to get back to you. I won't have an off-the-cuff answer. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. We saw Deshaun Watson not thrive as well in Houston without a run game. You really want to take away the run game from him in his real first season with Cleveland? I'll pass. 